the, the benefits, like I say, won't be won't be straight away. Um, it'll be a few years, and definitely within three to five, you will see the benefits of high yielding crops um, and reducing uh, grass weed burdens on 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 the land. Um, hi, Tom Fisher here from Ram Brothers. Um, we're farming in Hertfordshire. Uh, we're farming 8,000 acres uh, over a 20 mile radius um, of chalky light lands to heavy, heavy uh, wet clay soils. We're currently stood in a field at Buntingford um, with some drainage happening behind. And we purchased um, this land in September 24. It's 800 acres here of heavy land that hasn't been drained uh, since 1983. That was when it was last drained. Um, because of the soil type that is and surrounding topography of wet clay soils, uh, the drains over time have had their life and sort of given up their efficiency of how they work. Um, also with sort of extra building around the surrounding areas, bringing more surface water overloading uh, the current drainage program. So we have decided over the next three years, uh, starting this year in 2025, to drain a third, a third, a third of the farm across the board to basically make this land then profitable again and worth farming. Um, we're draining 86 hectares this year, two more phases for the next two years. And to do that, we've brought in um, consultant James Frey to help us with the project and steer us in the right direction of getting the uh, drains that we're currently putting in working well to do a job for the next 40 to 50 years. The, the hectares that we're draining this year has gone into a SFI scheme along with the uh, whole farm. We've put it into an overwintered long uh, stubble, stubble um, AHW7, which you can see behind you, which gives us the ability to drain here in April uh, in good conditions. Uh, really good that, you know, the weather's been dry and helpful to us. This then gives us the ability to get a cover crop, spring zone cover crop in behind it to try and get the uh, topsoil to sort of structure itself a bit behind the drains. Um, but between those two operations, we're going to mole plough because the soil is so wet underneath. We, we can get a really good mole um, at this current time of year and it means we haven't got to rush the project along. So by fallowing it for a year, we will then, this land will then lay dormant with the cover crop growing in it till uh, around August time, September. Probably grade it with some sheep just to make utilisation of the cover crop to the livestock. Um, and then hopefully some soil conditions will be dry enough after a nice summer, hopefully, to break up the topsoil uh, so that the drainage, the water that we get through the winter will drain through the topsoil uh, into the nice new moles, into the drains and off to the ditch network um, that takes the water away from the, from the fields. And the main reason we're doing this, we will be putting a first winter wheat in in October and we want a the wheat to have a good uh, rooting system uh, that it's not sat with wet feet um, so it can root well grow well yield well and also the because the land has been wet for quite a few years it's uh, managed to bring the uh, black grass to a higher population so by having better drainage uh, chemistry will work better and just the general soil type will improve itself over time um, by not being sat wet all over winter. Um, so we've had some drainage done before on other farms. Um, I've also had some drainage done on uh, other farms that I've managed previous to here. Um, and the results um, aren't, you're not gonna see the result in the first year. It will take time for it to develop. Probably within a couple of three years, you will start seeing the results of a 
the soil structure starting to get better and a better rooting structure from the crops that you're growing in it as long as you're looking after the soil type uh, with your operations it's no good doing all this drainage work and, and, and spending the money on it to then um, be here in the wet months of November with heavy machinery to uh, effectively go backwards on what you're doing. The, the benefits like I say won't be, won't be straight away um, it'll be a few years and definitely within three to five you will see the benefits of high yielding crops um, and reducing uh, grass weed burdens on, on, on the land. Yeah, tips wise, um, it's, it's not a case of just putting a trench in or a ditch in here and there. There's a lot more to it. Um, uh, we've, we've had a drainage consultant in um, that has surveyed the land for the topography um, and the contouring and has managed to, it's about getting the value out of the land in the sense of uh, yes, you can put lots of lots of drains in, but the drainage is very expensive. But uh, you know, you will get your return within back within ten years, and the drainage is there to last for forty years plus if you look after it. So it's it's a long term investment, and you want the you want the drains to be in correctly. So you know, bit bit like everything, you want uh, someone that lives and breathes drainage to consult you on you know the best practice the best way forward that's also not going to waste your money um, in the wrong place. Hi my name's James Freire I'm from FRA Projects um, we specialise specialise in water management in January this year we were contacted by uh, a landowner and also Rands Brothers with regards to this project and uh, Tom Fisher just to explore options with regards to some really pro problematic fields that they've got down in Hertfordshire. So we went for some initial meetings just to discuss um, what the potential options were with regards to this land, looking at whether it's almost a, a patching process, investigating drainage, repairing where needs to be done and almost putting limited schemes in place for you know moling over longer distances and then from that we were commissioned to actually do uh, a full farm survey so we've looked at these uh, each field in isolation as well as looking uh, at them uh, as one so to make sure that we know how water's moving from A to B and also how the fields are interlinked with regards to um, ditch systems and current uh, drainage infrastructure. The sort of Key points from that, from the surveys, is really the topography that we're dealing with and also with a couple of trial holes we then started exposing the existing drainage and we could see that it really wasn't fit for purpose, the gravel wasn't at the right height for moulding and also the clay tiles that had started to collapse. This field in particular also had surface water issues with regards to um, water moving in from higher ground, from development, so obviously that uh, poses a, a completely different problem with regards to water management in this this field. So this ditch had a sorry this field had a ditch uh, that ran through it uh, in 1972. That was eliminated and replaced with an 8-inch pipe. Due to development further upstream, that's now not suitable. So we've uh, for this field in particular, we then had to take a, a whole field approach of redesigning, managing that water coming into the field while also installing a, a drainage network within the field. The, the sort of brief with this soil type, when, when we're looking at it, is, is prime sort of moulding land. So with that, we're able to open the spacings up and maybe go from, rather than going a chain apart, which is 20 metre centres, we're able to open up to 40 or 60. So with that, we um, had that in mind. We did some core samples to make sure that the, uh, there was enough clay content for the moulds to actually be installed and hold for five to seven years. And then also then look at the, the farm equipment that they've actually got, looking at the, uh, the tractor and the mole plough and looking at the distance of that and making sure that we're then designing our schemes at the end of the fields with our lead drains to make sure that those um, moles can actually be contacted uh, so we're managing every bit of water across the field uh, in full. So a key sort of factor with regards to design is, is one thing obviously working through your levels and creating the DTM in each field and, and looking at your flow paths. It's then sizing the pipes to the correct specification, incorporating that in with uh, mould drainage, but then when it then actually comes to the point of installation is then transposing that information across to a contractor and, and making sure that goes onto the screen so that 
that information that we've provided can actually be laid within 25 mil accuracy actually out into the field. So um, the, the contractor that went through the process was then successful. They have the, the latest technology, Trimble equipment, that allows us to transfer this information over and actually onto their machinery and, and make sure that we're achieving that accuracy. Our, our role within this project management um, sort of sector is very much then looking at quality control. So we're inspecting drain runs, making sure that the gravel's correct at the right height, the gravel's suitable so it's clean, it, it's sort of to the correct standard. Uh, and obviously the, the pre-checks are very much on making sure people are using um, kite marked pipe and, and it's to all the, the British standards that we require. Uh, this is a twin leg mole plow um, with a uh, John Deere uh, 9620 RX on the front and this is going uh, crossways across the drainage system that LDC have put in for us, um, creating uh, basically effectively cl uh, clay pipes that uh, act as a, another uh, pipe to cross over the plastic ones to drain all the water between the drains that are say in this field in front of me here every 45 meters this is crossing and crew them and taking all that water in that area to those stone drains to the, uh, then go down to the ditch it's a simple system of a, a mole leg which has a shin on the front to protect the mole leg attached at the bottom is a foot um, which is basically starting to help you get it in the ground down to 24 inches we're running this at um, so 600 mil <coughs> uh, with the expander following at the back and then uh, the size of the clay mole will be the size of that expander the drains are being put in at 800 mil the mole is at 600 and the stone is coming 350 from the surface so uh, when the moles go through the stone uh, all the water then comes to that stone point and down to the drain and off to the ditch. Hello I'm George from Lincolnshire Drainage Company. We're land drainage contractors based in Boston in South Lincolnshire. We run five of these Mastenbrook 3020 trenches and we have eight of the Mastenbrook CT12s track stone carts. They run in tandem on jobs like this with the trencher putting the pipe in the ground followed by the, uh, the stone carts to put the gravel backfill on top of the pipes. This particular job in, in Hertfordshire um, was put out to a tender to a few different drainage contractors and um, we were successful in winning this, this project and um, yeah we've got a team of guys here with a couple of the, the gravel carts and one trencher here putting the the pipe in the ground. This job's going to take us around six weeks to complete from start to finish um, with a, a different sized pipes um, being installed from 160 mil mains down to 80 mil laterals. The mains go in, tend to go in between a metre and 1.2 metres in depth and the, uh, the laterals tend to be um, between 8 and 900 mil of cover. We're putting gravel backfill on all of the drains um, and that gravel backfill is coming within 300 mil of the surface to allow for cultivations to, to get water away quickly into the backfill and away down into the pipes and out into a suitable outlet, which in this case is a, a ditch system. Um, so we'll just take a short look around our Mastenbrook trencher machine here. This one's a Mastenbrook 3020 trencher. Um, it was new last year at Cereals at uh, 2040, uh, 2024, sorry. It's around 350 horsepower, weighs about 20, 24, 25 tonnes. It has a range of digging depth. Um, we can dig as shallow as sort of 500 mil and up to about two and a half metres in depth. This setup is currently for 80 mil pipe. Most of the drains we lay are between 80 mil and 200 mil in width. Um, and we can put those in, um, I say anywhere, up to two and a half metres in depth. The depth is controlled using GPS technology, both vertically and horizontally. So it's auto steer, auto depth. The trencher will reverse down the drainage run. It will take a topographic reading of the, the level of the land and then the operator will set the depth um, when he gets to the outfall just before they start the run. In this case, this 80 mil run is gonna be around 880 mil in depth, which will leave us 800 mil of cover. Um, on the pipe. Okay so here we have the cutting chain so there's 20 sets of tips on here so there's 40 the 20 pairs of tips on this we have different sizes so 
it goes from really narrow to a, a wider tip to help cut different sort of parts of the trench. We've got the auger here which will clear the soil away from the trench side. You then have the pipe box here. The pipe comes over the top. We're using polypipe land drainage pipe here, um, which is good quality, best quality pipe you can buy. It will come down the, bo down the box, in inside this yellow box, and out at the bottom of the trench um, at the correct depth. We have the gravel hopper at the back. So we've got 20 to 40 mil gravel going in, um, and it, the, the, the operator of the stone cart fills this, this hopper, and the machine um, can lift this higher and lower um, to get the right amount of gravel on, on each drainage run. As we go deeper, this box will lift up to make sure that we're still getting 300 mil from the surface um, on the drains. On this job, we've got two of these stone carts. They hold um, around 15 tonnes of stone. They're great at the minute we're running at the side. If we're in a crop, we could run straight behind, which gives us the versatility of working in crop, or in this case, we're on some stubble land. And it's just, yeah, they're a good versatile machine. That, and having two on site helps um, aid production um, because we do use quite a lot of stone, sort of between two and 300 tonne a day on a project like this. From a maintenance perspective with the drainage, this drainage scheme has some outfalls. Um, this ditch is currently well maintained. It's been freshly dug out, um, which means the water can get away quite nicely. It will be key over the coming years that this ditch is, is maintained and kept clear so that the water can flow away. These outfalls can be drain, uh, jetted um, to be cleaned out um, using a land drainage jetter. That was a high-powered high jet which will fire water in there, a little bit like a, a pressure washer almost, with a backwards-facing nozzle which will, um, which will help bring the silt back out and any sediment that's got into the pipe. Um, and that's the best way to, to keep these drains nice and clear 